Good morning, church. It's Kelly. I hope y'all are doing well. Uh, I'm excited to hear that uh, we're opening up to phase three uh, on Monday, it sounds like. I know we're seeing a lot of increases in the cases they keep keep telling us, but uh, I know God is in control, so I'm uh, encouraged by that. I pray all y'all are healthy and well. I want to talk this morning about, the, uh, about a parable in the Bible that Jesus tells about the talent. It's in Matthew 25, 14 through 30, if you want to follow along. But I call it Use It or Lose It. It's the name of the little study we're going to do today. But uh, I want to ask you a question. If you ever admire someone because they are so gifted or, or talented at something, maybe you wish you had that talent or could do what they do. I can tell you a little secret. I used to wish I could play the guitar and be a rock lead singer in a rock, in a rock band. But obviously, I don't have that talent, nor do I have the hair anymore. But uh, Or perhaps you maybe you think your talents and gift and ability is so small or it's just not important. Or maybe you don't think you have any talents or gifts or abilities at all. That may be where you're at this morning. Uh, in this parable of talents, Jesus addresses these responses, these questions. He First, is Jesus is saying that we all have talents, gifts, and abilities. Second, we learn that using whatever our abilities <clears throat> or talents or gifts are to glorify God are as important no matter how big or how small they are. And third, if you don't use it, you will lose it. You could lose it. We put it that way. I don't decide. God doesn't tell me when, how long it goes before you lose a gift that he may have given you or a talent that he may have given you. But uh, I'd like to pray for us and then I'd like to get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you this morning. God, thank you for the opportunity to open your word and learn. Thank you for the opportunity to do this video and the technology that's out there. I hope it reaches uh, many people, but God, and it's not about me. It's not about, it's not about the message. It's about your words and that it changes someone's hearts to either bring them to you for the first time or to, to open their eyes to where they're at if they know you already to draw closer. God, thank you for loving us. God, uh, uh, just be with all of those, my brothers and sisters today, as they go about doing the things that they do. Thank you for loving us. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. And like I said, it's called the parable of the talents. For it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, to another one one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away, then he went away, verse 16. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Verse 19. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made you five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had, had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you do not sow, gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I, where I scattered no seed. Verse 27, Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give to he who has the ten. For to everyone who has, has will more be given, and he will have an, an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Verse 30, And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In, this, in that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So let's dissect this parable some here. It's a little bit obvious, you know, to, to some of us, but let's just look a little deeper if we can. We have four characters in the parable here. We have the master and we have the, the three servants, all with different abilities as 
verse 15 tells us. The man with much ability was given five talents. The man with average ability was given two talents. The man with minimal ability received one talent. Why does this matter? Okay, the talents represent opportunities to use our abilities. Think about this. If, a, if five talents were given to a person with minimal ability, he would be destroyed by the, by the heavy responsibility of that, the burden of that. But if only one talent were, talent were given to a man of great ability, he would be disgraced and degraded. You know, maybe bored, not even challenged at all to, to be able to perform at, at his maximum ability that he had, that God had given him. See, God assigns work and opportunity according to ability. That doesn't mean God gave the more ability to someone because he loved them more. That's not what that's saying. The point about ability is your, is your, God, your God-given ability is yours. Okay, we've all been assigned our ministries according to the abilities and gifts God has given us. It's our privilege to serve the Lord and multiply his goods. Re in reality, it's really not about gifts and abilities here. It's about two categories of servants, faithful and unfaithful. The faithful servants took their talents and put them to work for their master. The faithful servant hid his talent in the earth. Instead of using his opportunities, he buried them. He did not purposely do evil. But by doing nothing, he was committing sin and robbing his master of service and increase. The two men put their money to work and received the same accommodation. But understand this, it was not a, just a portion of the whole, but they were given a greater proportion to the whole. By just increasing what they had been given, they were given much, much, much more. L listen, let's listen to again what he told the two faithful servants. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Now you can see it was not what they, what they were given, the portion, the amount, because obviously the master had plenty of money. It's it pretty clear just based on this story that the master, five talents, which is the most he gave to one guy, was not a whole lot of money. So the total he gave out was eight talents. So evidently this, this king was loaded, if you will. But it was their faithfulness to their master that they were given more in proportion to what he had in comparison as to what was available. Now you may have to think about that a minute. But see, you see, their faithfulness gave each of them a capacity for greater service and greater responsibility. <clears throat> you may not know what your gift, is, your gift is, or you may know your gift but don't use it. But the bottom line is God has given you an ability and a gift, and that gift is there, so is there. You have one, or you have many. I don't know what, what your abilities are, and maybe you don't either, but you can be asking God to show you and just paying attention to where you seem to go and be the, the best at it, what you do. That's your God-given ability. <clears throat> but the question is, what are you doing with your gift, with your ability? What are you doing with it? That's the question. You know, another interesting thing about our God-given abilities is this. When you use your gift in the service of the Lord, he will trust you with many things, meaning that your gifting will expand in capacity. You may even discover you have other abilities that you didn't know you have. I love to hear the stories where someone took a small thing, ability they had, and they used it, and it affected and God took it and it affected hundreds and thousands, even millions of people. There's lots of stories out there like that. If I had time, I could probably, I could look up and tell you some. I think of some in my own life that I've witnessed. Another thing the two faithful servants received as they entered it is that they entered into the joy of the master. That was interesting. Whose joy? The master's joy, right? In our case, the master is God in this, in this story. But don't mistake uh, this to mean that the master would just really, really like these two guys a whole lot and was so happy with them. Instead, a deeper understanding of this statement, entering into the master's joy, we learned that it was entering into a joy like you have never experienced before. I know when I'm using my God-given gifts to glorify God and, and helping someone come to Christ or, or help someone walk with Christ, or just feel the love of Christ, that brings me joy that I don't get anywhere else. See, your work and toil for the Lord not only glorify God, it takes you to a place you've never been. 
let's talk a minute about the third servant because a lot of people think this whole parable is about that. I think it's it's deeper than that. It's about faithful and unfaithfulness as we've discovered. The third servant was unfaithful, therefore was unrewarded. That's the fact of this parable. Because this man was so afraid he might fail, he never tried to succeed. He feared life and his responsibilities. This paralyzed him with anxiety. To, to, to he, so he buried the talent to protect it. Some people will think, we had a discussion about this the other night, and and uh, some people are like, I don't see anything wrong with that. I was just trying to protect it. He gave it to me. I'm protecting it. But even in the parable, it says the least you could have done was put it in the bank so it would draw some interest. There's no risk in that. What we do not use for the Lord, we're in danger of losing. The master reprimanded the unfaithful, unprofitable servant and then took his talent from him. Hmm. Some feel that this unprofitable servant was maybe wasn't even a believer. But it seems, I don't know if that's the issue here, but it seems that he was a true servant, even though he proved to be an unprofitable one. The outer darkness mentioned in Matthew 25, 30, it doesn't always need to refer to hell, even though that is often the case in the Gospels. You look in Matthew 8, 12, or 22, 13, that's what it means. But it's dangerous to build a theology on parables because parables just illustrate truth in vivid ways, okay? I'm not certain, and, and further study is not completely clear what, clear what cast in the darkness in this context represents here. But this parable is clear in this, in describing the consequences of two attitudes to Christ's return. That's what this parable is about. The person who diligently prepares for it by investing his or her time and talent to serve God will be rewarded. The person who has no heart for the work of the kingdom will be punished. That's what's clear in this parable. Can't read more than that into it. God rewards faithfulness. Those who, who, who bear no fruit for God's kingdom cannot expect to be treated the same as those who are faithful. That's, that's, that's the gist of this parable. That's the truth, of the, the truth of this parable. Man was dealt with by the Lord. He lost his opportunity for service and he gained no praise and no reward. To me, I kind of think that is outer darkness because why wouldn't I want to serve God for his glory? Why would I not want to experience his everlasting joy? Look, I, I can honestly say I have served myself many times for my own joy, and never did it last or truly make me joyful. You know, maybe trying to get in this third servant's head, maybe he's possible he thought his one talent uh, was not that really that important. He didn't have five. He didn't have two. If he only had one. Why worry about one? Why should he worry about one? Because he was appointed as a steward by the Lord, just like we are. Were it not for the one talent people in our world, very little would get accomplished if you'll stop and think about it. Many times we think we have to do these, these big things when the little things are just as important, especially if God's given you the ability to do it. His one talent could have increased to two or, and brought glory to his master, but he did nothing with it. God is telling us we should be watching, witnessing, and working. We may not be accessible in the eyes of men or even popular with others, but if we are faithful and profitable, we shall receive our reward. So I guess I'm asking you this morning, you know, if you're using your talents and abilities, amen. Thank you. Thank you for, for all you're doing. Thank you for being a profitable servant uh, to our Master and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're not doing anything and, it's be, and you know you could help or you know you could be a help to someone using the ability God's give you, whether it be a big thing or a little thing, you know you can. You're setting the door, I could meet that need. I could help. Then I think you need to ask yourself, you know, who are you serving? Are you serving yourself or, or are you serving the Lord? Are you, are you saying that your, your ability is not important? Then you're making God out to be a liar. And if you say you don't have any ability, you're making God out to be a liar. And God doesn't lie. And he's not lied to you. He's been faithful to you, even though you may not have been using your ability. And I, I think I've seen it happen to people who use their abilities and their gifts that God's given them, that they've given them much more, but not more than they can handle. But they've taken it, and, they, and, they, and he, God makes it grow. We are to scatter the seeds through our abilities and gifts. God makes it grow. God takes it and runs with it. So I hope this finds you this morning, um, just maybe a little perspective about 
What, what am I doing? You know, how, how am I encouraging someone? How am I using my ability to help, to help someone else or to help the church grow? How am I doing that? Or am I sitting around making a lot of excuses uh, for not doing it? So I, I pray that this, uh, this message doesn't hit you upside the head and, and ruin your day by any means, but it is challenging. You know, Jesus didn't walk away from the challenges. He loved people. He had compassion on people. But he also has expect, expectations for us when we come to him because the expectations is to, is to bring more people to him. It's not to do, but it's to be using what he's given us. He would, he would not ask you to do something he did not equip you for. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, God, thank you for this message. Thank you for the time with my brothers and sisters as we go through this, through this, through the Bible and study your word. Uh, thank you for loving us, God, when we're not lovable. Thank you for giving us gifts and abilities to use, God. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't deserve them. Sometimes we get a whole lot more caught up in our abilities than we do who gave it to us, the creator of that. God, thank you. That is you, and thank you for that. Thank you for Jesus that he died on a cross so we can have a purpose to in our abilities. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Hope to see you Sunday.